Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Oxhorn, and there are six relay towers in the game. I'm going through each of them one by one. Today I'm doing the third one, which is 0BB915. You can find this one north of the Fort Hagen Red Rocket truck stop. Climbing on up the platform, you can activate the relay tower using the terminal, which will extend the satellite antenna. Once extended, you find three new radio broadcasts. The Civil Alert System broadcast takes you north towards the satellite array. This is a message from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Emergency Alert System. This morning, Saturday, October 23rd, authorities detected that a nuclear attack had commenced against the United States. The following cities affected include, but are not limited to, Washington, D.C., New York, Philadelphia, and Boston. If you are receiving this emergency alert message, immediately seek shelter that can provide protection from radioactive fallout. This has been an emergency action notification. If you have Automatron installed, this is where you find a huge group of Rust Devils guarding the entrance to a bunker that plays an important role in the DLC quest. You'll have quite a fight on your hands, especially at younger levels, but once dead, you actually have to hunt for a second bunker, not the one that takes you to the major facility that you explore during Automatron, but instead, if you go to the very back of the second bunker, which is propping up the Raider structure, you find a very small hatch. Inside, we find a small military bunker. The ham radio is on a nearby desk. You can walk over and switch it off. Here you can find an explosives crate, a box of ammunition, and other minor loot. The next signal is the Raider radio signal. This one gets stronger as you walk northeast of the relay tower. Anyone out there interested in buying some chems? Come find me! I'm at the three trees with flags. Wait for me there, and I promise you won't be disappointed. These cabs will really take your head off and spin it around. This has been a pre-recorded message. This one is tricky to find because this portion of the map is pretty large and flat. You can see for long distances, there are no roads and after a while, everything starts to look the same. You can also bump into a bunch of really interesting content in this large stretch of land. Close to the relay tower, we find a tank partially buried in the earth. On the ground next to an army helmet is a note called orders. It's a note from Colonel Kemp. Savvy viewers will remember Colonel Kemp as the same military official who was really interested in the scientist's work at the Cambridge Polymer Labs. In this note, he is chastising some of his soldiers. Apparently, some soldiers got drunk one night and took a tank out for a spin. As we can see, they got the tank stuck. Instead of digging it out, they went back to base, where Colonel Kemp berated them. He says he wants this tank back by 0600 tomorrow morning, Quote, spit shine so I can see my face in it. He says that if they don't bring it back, he's going to, quote, kick their asses up between their ears before throwing them in the brig for the duration of the war. We find the remains of two soldiers digging feverishly, trying to save this tank. The bombs must have dropped the very morning they were digging to unearth this vehicle, frying them instantly. Near to the tank is an abandoned ATV with some minor loot on the inside. We can find some aircraft wreckage. We find what looks like the wing and propeller of a vertebrate, and then a large engine casing for a commercial flight. To the northeast, we find a really interesting shack. It lies on top of a cliff overlooking a lake beneath it. You can find a bear walking around the lake below. Inside the shack, we see gas canisters. Maybe helium? Propane? They're in red canisters and they're stacked up. But what's interesting is that this shack has been outfitted with troughs that I suppose are used to guide these things as if they were rockets. If you shoot the nozzle off of one of them, it catches fire and flies away. I am not ashamed to admit that I spent way too much time picking up every single one of these canisters, setting it ever so gently in the trough, and then shooting off the nozzle and watching it fly off into the valley. I don't know a lore reason behind this at all, but it sure is a lot of fun. Finally, we come upon a metal shack amongst some 
and blasted out trees. There are some Halloween decorations and posters on it. As soon as we get close, we get attacked by a raider. We can't talk with him, he just opens fire forcing you to kill him. This must be the raider who was on the raider radio trying to sell us chems. But this doesn't make any sense. You can look all the way around, but there are no trees with flags. The recording said, look for the three trees with flags. Well, there are a whole bunch of trees here, not just three, and none of them have any flags. So I really don't understand this recording at all. Inside the shack, we can find a few minor chems. The bulk is in a bunker that you can access via a hatch behind the shack. Inside, we find the ham radio and a tidy stash of chems in a chem cooler. So this is indeed the correct location. The final recording is the distress signal. The signal gets stronger if you walk southwest of the relay tower. Anyone out there? If you can hear me, I'm trapped inside a bunker in. What is this? Fiddler's Green Estates. Got some crawlies outside. It's nothing I couldn't normally handle, but I'm nursing a bum leg. Could use an assist. This has been a pre-recorded message. Message repeats in three seconds. We come upon an abandoned trailer park called Fiddler's Green. This unique location has an interesting story to tell itself. The place is filled with all sorts of feral ghouls and glowing ones. You can hack into a terminal in the leasing office that will open up a nearby wall safe. In the wall safe is the Fiddler's Green trailer key. Just north of the leasing office is a large locked up trailer that can only be opened with this key. Inside you can find a full level suit of power armor. If you'd like an XO one set, make sure that you don't come anywhere near Fiddler's Green until you're at least over level 42 or 43. In the swimming pool, we can find the corpse of a glowing one and also an expert locked safe. Inside the leasing office, we also find a holotape called the New Squirrel Tape Number One. Hello, my name is Storytime Simon, and I hope you like stories because I love to tell stories. This one is called The New Squirrel. Come with me on this magical adventure. There once was a young squirrel named Ricky who lived in a big oak tree in a city park. Ricky was a brown squirrel and lived in the oak tree with all his brown squirrel friends and family. Every day, Ricky would look out from the top of his tree and wonder what kind of squirrels lived in other trees. The older squirrels warned Ricky that the squirrels in other trees were thieves and liars. They were never to be trusted. Ricky had a rebellious heart and would not form his opinions based on anecdotal evidence. End of holotape. Please insert holotape two. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is a bit creepy. Holotape number two can be found in the trailer right next to the leasing office. Storytime Simon here. Welcome back. And here it is, part two of The New Squirrel. One night, a red squirrel appeared at the bottom of Ricky's oak tree and woke Ricky and his family. Oh, please help me, said the red squirrel. I am lost and have nowhere to go. The elders were quick to turn the red squirrel away, but Ricky scurried down the trunk of his tree and stood firm next to the red squirrel. He yelled up at the elder squirrels. How could you turn him away? Just because he's from another tree, he needs our help. Affected by Ricky's assuredness and determination, the elders agreed to take in the red squirrel. The red squirrel thanked Ricky for standing up for him. You won't regret this, he said. End of holotape. Please insert holotape three. Okay, all right, looks like we're gearing up for a morality tale here. To find the final holotape, go to the trailer just north of the leasing office. It's the one between the leasing office and the locked one where you found the suit of power armor. You can find a lone wanderer motorcycle leaning against it. Inside, you actually get a copy of Live and Love, issue number four, The Secretary Charmer, which permanently gives you 25% more experience from persuading women. And here we find the third holotape from Storytime Simon. Storytime Simon here with the exciting conclusion to The New Squirrel. Tomorrow we can get to know each other and become best friends, said Ricky to the Red Squirrel. The Red Squirrel made a sound that Ricky took for agreement, and the two squirrels curled up to sleep. Later that night, Ricky woke up to the sound of leaves rustling in the oak tree. He looked around. The Red Squirrel was gone. 
Ricky surveyed the landscape below and saw a pack of glowing eyes approaching the base of his tree. Cats! Ricky heard a voice from a nearby tree. It was the red squirrel. I'm sorry, he said. They were following me and I couldn't bring them to my tree. They would have eaten my family. As the cats ascended the tree and began to devour Ricky's friends and family, Ricky reflected on his decisions. His last words were, I really wish I would have trusted my elders. The end. This is likely a reference to Teddy Ruxpin. Anyone remember Teddy Ruxpin? I'm a child of the 80s, and so I have vivid memories of this toy. It was the latest rage back when I was a kid. It was a talking teddy bear that moved its mouth and eyes when you stuck a cassette tape in its back. I don't think it's a coincidence that each of these new squirrel tapes is found sitting next to a teddy bear. As for the story itself, well, I guess the moral is that you just shouldn't trust people. Don't make friends, stay in your trailer, stay with your neighbors in your little trailer estate. That's how you can be safe. I can imagine this kind of mentality post-war, but I get the impression that these tapes were recorded pre-war, because it looks like this trailer park hasn't been occupied since. I guess xenophobia was a very popular pastime in this little corner of Boston before the war. But back to the relay tower, where on earth is this bunker? Well, it's kind of tricky to find. After you finish exploring the trailer park, you can find the bunker nestled beneath a small group of trees and barrels near one of the trailers in the back of the trailer park. It's right next to one of those beige locked trailers. Inside, we learn that the poor man didn't make it. We find him laying on his bed with his injured leg propped up. He must have died from his injuries. Once inside, we can turn off the ham radio, ending the broadcast. There is some pretty good loot in here, you can unlock a toolbox, you can unlock a safe, and you'll find ammo appropriate for your level. Back outside, if you leap up on top of the leasing office, we find a disturbing scene. A skeleton lies on a sleeping bag, surrounded by three of those banging symbol monkeys. I don't understand it, I can't explain it, I just took out my gun and shot those dang blasted monkeys. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the full story of Relay Tower 0BB915. As I said in my previous videos, there are six in total, which means I have three more videos to make. Never fear, ladies and gentlemen, the story does not end here. I will cover the full story of all of the Relay Towers in the game. What did you think of this Relay Tower and the two before? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I read all of your comments and I use them as inspiration for my future videos. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe so that you're notified every single time I publish something new. If you'd like to chat about this topic with other like-minded individuals on my Oxhorn Community Discord server, be sure to click on the invitation link to my Discord server in the description of this video. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad that you're here watching this video today. Thank you for watching from the bottom of my heart, and I'll see you tomorrow morning bright and early with a brand new video.